All right, folks, Real Alien Tom back with you with another exciting episode here in the garden. Just going to do an update on what we've been doing. A uh, little bit of a uh, rooted cutting action going on here. I want to show you the raised beds and how the greens have come in. I want to show you the greenhouse and how those plants are coming along. And then we're going to look at the compost pile and see how that's coming because I really need to get some compost since that episode I did uh, several months ago where we made the bunny poop compost. And it's about ready in the middle. So this is a little something we're doing. It's 10, 5, 13. Some more rooted cuttings. I've got some uh, different things going on here. Some dwarf Pierre's japonica. Did some uh, these dwarf gardenias. I've got some, uh, this is a dwarf uh, arborvitae. And then some smoke trees. Smoke trees. Hey. You know, they're hard to root, and I'm hoping I'm going to get some success, but really excited about getting some cuttings of the Asiatic jasmine, the snow in summer, and maybe we'll get some root formation. All right, folks, let's check some of this out. Okay, so here's the raised beds, and they've been in about a month now, and I'm already just pinching a lot of bok choy and arugula, and I've actually, from another episode, transplanted some. I've got some sweet peas growing here, more bok choy. You know, I'm limited on light, but uh, I've thinned them out quite a bit, some collars, some kale, and uh, coming up here on the guard, on the deck, let's go look at the greenhouse. Um, these guys were just transplanted out, dibbled out of the uh, other beds. Some nice bok choy going on here. The larger the pot, the bigger the plant there. Some arugula and more kale. More bok choy, more arugula up here. And we're just uh, getting ready to transplant those. Bonsai action here. Do some training on that bonsai. But yeah, right, I want to show you some of these plants. I'm planting the mondo grass in the cracks today. Little dwarf uh, hostas. Some uh, sedums. And just playing around, you know, it... It's October 5th, and we are out of water. I mean, I'm completely dry on all the rain barrel action I had going on. It's been rough. And, uh, you know, I think I might have to break out the symbol tree and my water drum over there and make some rain. I hear there's a hurricane coming, but uh, she ain't got here yet. I'm anticipating we need some rain, folks. Just pan around on the deck. Things are really done well. Who's that going there? That's Sherwood. All right, guys. Let's check out the compost. Okay, folks. As you recall, my composting facility here. And this is really a cold pile that I constructed out of some fencing material. Some 4x4 four four posts. Real simple. Little latches here with some paint stirs that could be used for uh, you know just the latch to hold that together a decorative thing but um, let's go look down in here and see what's been going on and we got about temperature of the pile about 90 in the middle so it's been slow cooking and right now my intention is to turn it if you recall, I had it all the way up to the top of that fence and it has settled down quite a bit as the microbial activity has been taking place and breaking it down. The outside, you can see the leaves. Despite the fact that I do water this down and it's got a lot of rain back here, if you can see down there, that's where my honey hole will be. And I'm going to go ahead and try to harvest some right now. As you can see, I've got my big bucket and a old guinea pig cage and what I do is just sift it into the big bucket from the pile. So let's get started to see what kind of a harvesting we can do. Let the sun shine, let the sun shine in. Well folks, as you can see I turned this pile pretty good. We had it up to about 90 degrees and that's really a cold pile. So it's going to take quite a bit longer. I did find my honey hole down in here and managed to just get a little bit of halfway finished compost out of it after screening it but uh so we'll put that baby back to bed and let it probably by next spring we'll have something going 
Let's move on and take a look at some of these rooted cuttings. Okay, folks, so if you recall from an earlier video how I made this little greenhouse, hothouse, out of a, a Coke tray and some wire, and let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We've rooted. Look at, yep, we've rooted really well that particular hydrangea there. Let's take a look at some of these black dragon cryptomeria. Throwing off a few roots, or have they calloused up? We're seeing a little bit of callus formation, some roots starting to come out on the cryptomerias. So I'm going to just put them back. They'll probably overwinter in here. And uh, there's some hollies back in here and some other things. So that's progressing really good. I like the dinogro, the kaolin. And this is a new ground cover I discovered recently. It's called. Uh, Manberry or Maleberry. Maleberry or Marlberry. It's got these little berries on it that's really good in shade. You can see something consistent with uh, the plants I grow around here. Most of them are shade loving plants, not the veggies, but some of the other things that I grow. And this is, I just want to show you the new cutting bed I just put together here in various plants. And that's going to go over there in the garden in the uh, nursery and see if we can get some roots on this okay all right folks here's Tommy Cow at the real alien Tom at a in the box the bid box that is and I'm here as you just saw didn't come out too good with my compost so I'm having to buy some additional and as you'd watched earlier videos of me making potting soil <clears throat> I'm just up here doing some serious math and if you come down the line of the potting soils already mixed up you're looking for anything between $7.31 a cubic foot down to $5.31. I like making my own and this with this product. Thought about this peat moss, and I'm going to talk about that. That's my baby, the nature's helper. And you know my mix is the 3 2 one, three bags nature's helper, two parts organic Svigaro, and then sand. And what I'm coming out with my mix, it's costing $3.45 a cubic foot to make my mix. So that's pretty good. I think I'm on track now. I've worked for uh, growers before who used a lot of just hardwood or pine bark mulch. And you're looking at $2.80 a bag shredded bark mulch. And you can mix that and come out, what is that? That's like $1.40 per cubic foot. So that's adding bulk. To your mix but I like my mix it works real well so let's get back to the house and get mixed all right folks well this is the mixed up finished product and because it doesn't contain a lot of nutrients some of those higher dollar products where you're paying upwards of almost eight dollars a cubic foot for it is already fortified with fertilizer and I'm adding three things I like to make it myself I use the azomite a little bit of that that guana mix that in real you know with your mix you want a souped up mix and then some humic acid which I always like to use humic acid but uh, makes a really good mix so I'm actually coming out a lot better I can actually add a little bit of fertilizer there's already fertilizer in the organics Vigoro now this price point came in on this organics um, quite a bit lower than what I'm used to using the miracle grow I don't know if there's a a battle war here, a war on um, a price war going on between Vigoro and Miracle Grow. But right now, that was the deal. So always take a look at that, you know, compare on a square foot basis. It can get kind of confusing sometimes. I noticed some of the um, products are actually asking, uh, they're measured in um, liquid measurements, which, you know, they were talking quartz. They're 30, you know. You're getting eight quarts in one of these bags, you know, and um, I had to figure out, you know, trying to get liquid volume versus uh, solid uh, volume or mass. Some of them are in pounds. It, stuff gets wet sometimes. It, uh, the, uh, you know, these bags can get really, really heavy and double the weight of what was normally produced. So don't trust the uh, dry weight. Always go with the um, volume. And that is cubic feet. I like to use cubic feet 
Uh, I don't trust anything in leaders or courts, you know. I mean, it's uh, not just, it's not the way to go. All right. I mean, if you've got a dry product, let's talk about the mass, the volume of that product, you know, in cubic feet rather than in quarts and liters. All right, folks. So, we've had a busy day today. Planted a bunch of plants that we uh, actually propagated here and then some pansies out front in the old beds showing you a bulkhead that's going to get installed in this rain barrel and that's in an upcoming video we've looked at some of the greens coming in we looked at the deck we we'll to talk about water uh, the leafy greens growing in the greenhouse which are going to go all throughout this bed and now I've got the little annuals planted down here not annuals. These are this is mondo grass in all of the cracks down here. Some step-ons, sedum, and that's hosta, little baby hosta. We're growing some herbs and some collards. This is all going to get planted with bok choy, collards, kale. Look at something else I just installed. Some lighting, landscape lighting to try to. Lighten up everything. Beautiful camellias. The snow in summer. Asiatic jasmine. But okay, guys. It's been a long day. It's not dark enough yet to really enjoy this. But it'll illuminate these camellias. And I'm going to plant all this fortified soil down here with leafy greens for the winter. So you'll be seeing future episodes with how the leafy greens are coming. This is the landscape, the new landscape I put in. This old planter over here will get planted. We'll be firing up the chimney and making some biochar. But anyway, Alien Tom signing out. This is the new patio, enjoying it. Definitely gonna do something with that spaceship in the future. It crashed here. And we got a little curb here. He lives with us. He's teaching me how to do all this stuff. But anyway. If you guys have any questions, hey, subscribe. Post them down below. It's Alien Tom from Outer Space Landscape. Kerbit's here to assist. And he knows a lot about rocket science. You know, this is not rocket science, but we're trying. Y'all have a great one. Okay, signing out.